want to talk to you a little bit about women who opposed the revolution, that is, women who were loyalists. Uh, sometimes they're mistakenly called Tories, but nobody was really a Tory by the 18th century. They were loyal to the crown, and there were many, many thousands of people who were loyal to the crown. Uh, John Adams once said one-third were for the revolution, one-third were against, and one-third had no opinion, but the truth is, that until the revolution was well underway, most people were neutral. Somebody's gonna tax us, we don't care who it is, we're not gonna lose our life over this. Uh, so the ones who remained loyal, even after independence were declared, was declared, uh, suffered uh, tremendously as a result. They were the minority in many places and they were much uh, less well organized than the, than the revolutionaries. In many cases, uh, the women were uh, persecuted and were uh, mistreated as surrogates for their husbands. If their husbands had gone off and enlisted in the British Army or in loyalist battalions, loyalist troops, or if their husbands had gone to England uh, to escape, uh, especially the elite loyalists, to escape being jailed, uh, crowds and, and uh, political leadership took it out, in effect, on their wives as a kind of representative of their husband's disloyalty. And I want to give you two examples of this that I think are quite striking. Uh, Esther Sewell was married to Jonathan Sewell. Jonathan Sewell was a Massachusetts uh, loyalist. He was John Adams' closest friend right up until 1775. No one really knew the revolution was actually going to happen, and he and John Adams argued politics, but they never dreamed that they would be on opposing sides for real. Uh, John Adams had actually courted Esther Quincy before Jonathan Sewell had, but John Adams was short and round and never stopped talking, uh, and Esther Sewell was much more taken by a much more attractive, um, uh, fun-loving uh, gentleman named Jonathan Sewell, and she married him. Uh, Jonathan Sewell's career uh, went very well in the 1760s, 1770s. He was appointed attorney general, which was a plum position uh, paid for by, uh, eventually by the royal government. And he became one of the leading propagandists in the newspaper for the, for the crown side, arguing that, that these were demagogues and dis, uh, disgruntled uh, ne'er-do-wells who were opposing a British policy. And so he became, along with Thomas Hutchison of Massachusetts, one of the most hated men in Massachusetts by the men who, would, who were the, quote, radicals who were, would eventually become the revolutionaries. He had a beautiful brick house in uh, Charleston, right outside of uh, Boston, and his wife was home one evening with her two young sons. Sewell was in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, and all of a sudden a crowd of angry men and boys surrounded the house. Uh, they were demanding that Jonathan Sewell come out so they could hang him. They wanted to wreak their revenge uh, on a man who had written so many articles in the newspaper defending the king and defending parliament. Esther Sewell went to the door and she said, uh, uh, he's not home, he's in Boston. Rocks began to hit the windows of the house. The crowd became more and more unruly and Esther realized that she and her sons were in danger. She was a very clever woman. She came back to the door and she said, my husband isn't here but I'm sure he would issue this invitation to you. Why don't you come in and go down to the wine cellar and take some refreshments? They came in, they drank up most of the wine, and they left, and Esther was safe. But it must have been an extremely frightening experience because the men in that crowd were her neighbors. That is, she recognized the men who were trying to kill her husband and trying to do harm to her and her sons. And this is the sense of isolation that many of these loyalist women, especially the wives of prominent men, experienced 
Grace Galloway is another example of this. Jo uh, Joseph Galloway, her husband, had been in the uh, Continental Congress, and at the last minute he said, I, I cannot uh, break my vow of loyalty to the king. And immediately, Pennsylvania radicals came after him, and he fled first to New York, uh, where the British Army was, and then to England, where also Jonathan Sewell would eventually go. Uh, he left Grace Galloway behind because, like many loyalist men who were wealthy, he thought that if his wife was there on the property, they would be, the, the revolutionaries would leave that property alone. Most of them were wrong about that. Now, Grace Galloway was not a woman of the people. Her father was one of the wealthiest men uh, in Pennsylvania, her husband was a prominent man, and she was a snob. There's no getting around it. She was quite a haughty woman. And she said that this revolution has nothing to do with me. Uh, I, I am a Groden and a Galloway, and I'm untouchable. Uh, it turned out that that wasn't true. First, she tried to guarantee that the property she had brought into the marriage from her father would be safe. If they wanted to confiscate her husband's property, that's fine, but hers should be safe. And she lost that battle. The revolutionaries in Pennsylvania said, your husband's a traitor and everything that is in his possession belongs to us. Within a year, they came for her house. Grace Galloway was, found it unimaginable. She tried to stand them off. They picked her up by her elbows, and they put her out on the street. She wound up living for several years in abject poverty in a rented room. Eventually, she went to New York, where the British uh, were in control in New York City, and she died there literally brokenhearted, but also never understanding what the revolution had to do with her. Uh, other women understood what the revolution had to do with them, but they too suffered abuse. Women who were not uh, uh, members of the elite. Their homes were burned, their possessions were taken in small towns everywhere, committees of safety, as they were called, demanded loyalty oaths, and if the husbands left, or if the husbands refused, or if the husbands went to join the British troops, uh, the wife and all the possessions were fair game to the revolutionaries. Some women were beaten by their neighbors for having the wrong political views. And in some very sad cases, women who went to their own parents asking for refuge were told, you're a traitor to your country's cause. We don't want to have anything to do with you. So the isolation that many of these women in small towns and farming communities felt must have been extraordinary.